If you are watching this, please do comment, like, subscribe, join the notification gang, hit the notification bell, get notifications every and any time I post. Thank you, I appreciate it, and I'm out. What is up, YouTube? It is showtime, and I am back with another video. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going over how you can somewhat contain post scores. But before we get into anything, we are currently at 857 subscribers at the time of this recording. I want to thank every single person, every single buddy that's been helping support this channel, liking, popping into streams. Shout out to you guys. You guys are the GOAT. Um, I really do appreciate it, and we'll get straight into today's video. So as you guys do know, post scores are quite the problem this year. Um, you will see a lot of lineups where they have a paint beast and a post score, which are two of the most overpowered builds in the game. Um, I think I think paint beast is definitely one of the best builds in the game, and so was a post score. It was in my top three uh, most overpowered builds in the game. So when you combo these two together, it can be pretty aids, uh, especially with post hooks. And um, through playing them and through a lot of experience playing these uh, cheesy builds, I've somewhat formed a criteria or a way, uh, ways that you can come together and kind of beat these guys. Um, it is very difficult to beat these type of builds, but where there is a will, there is a way. There are definitely ways that you can go about trying to at least contain these builds because with these type of builds, I don't believe in shutting down or clamping these builds. I don't believe in that. I think you can only contain it. It's like LeBron. Like there's no shutting down LeBron. All you can do, or Giannis, there's all you can do is contain them and stop them from getting a certain amount of points so uh, some ways that you so in this video I'll be going over maybe some ways some tips some tricks that you guys can stop post scores I have gotten a few comments asking how the hell can we stop post scores can we patch these guys um, next gen is next Tuesday so hopefully next gen uh, there is a patch on post scores and we won't have to deal with this nonsense anymore um, but we'll just get straight into a few methods that I have on trying to at least contain these type of lineups especially uh, post scores so as you guys know what post score is, they usually do go with the post hook move. Um, if you are a post scorer, I'm going to put you on some sauce um, and you want to know how to post score. All you literally have to do is move your analog stick up and while you're in a post move. And uh, that's pretty much it. You'll be able to get the post hook animation. You do have to time it, meaning you have to uh, move the analog stick straight up for you to get a green light release with it. Um, it is fairly easy, cheesy. It's just broken the way post scores are able to score at will. Um, so as you guys do know they usually go for the post hook so my first piece of advice to you guys would be to time your jumps um, I know that uh, a lot of people don't think that jumping is a good thing but when you're playing a post score it is important to always jump you have to jump um, it's not about just senselessly jumping you have to time your jumps so when you're guarding a post score you almost have to wait until they start getting into the post hook animation when they get into the post hook animation is when you'll realize you'll need to jump so another very big piece of advice to people trying to guard post squares is never press l2 uh, people think that l2 is the way to play defense it never really is even when you're playing guards i've stressed this multiple times post scores become post scores when you give them a body so when you give post scores a body and you give them that push animation that betters them people don't understand that um post scores look for contact so those bump at those bump um animations you get against them when you're bumping them around that only helps them because they have big strength and all their badges will just activate because they're getting bumped so the way i play against post scores is i actually do not press l2 and i time um for post hooks. so only use l2 if they're gonna dunk the ball um if they're trying to do post hooks you have to uh, do not press L2 and just jump. Uh, you will get a farther reach on the contest when you're doing that and you're playing them that way. Um, usually you DC post scores all, all the time. You see them on twos. So um, it is also a combined um, effort from both you and the guard or you and whoever you're playing with. So yes, my first tip was to definitely time your jumps. My second tip is to play the passing lanes when you're versing um, lineups like this. Uh, sometimes the post score will get shut down, meaning they will not have the option to score because fairly good defense is being played. And they'll look for a pass to that cheesy either stretch or paint beast. Uh, post scores are inside built so they usually kick it out to a stretch if they get double teamed or even cheesier they'll have a paint beast that plays paint to get all the rebounds so when that happens you need to play passing lanes so they do not you do not allow those passes to get through and you can get a stop and end the game quickly 
another huge piece of advice that I have for people trying to stop or beat post scoring lineups like this, especially on the twos, is your guard has to be able to shoot. You can't afford to give these builds the ball every single second of the day. You will only be doing harm for your team. It is not a good thing when you are constantly giving them the ball. Uh, post scores are looking to end the game as soon as possible with their 99 post hook stat or whatever it is. Um, it's a dangerous to give them the ball. Um, it's important that your guard knows how to score. So in this clip, like my guard that I was playing with could really shoot the ball. He did miss once, um, but he was really good with shooting the ball. Try and play, have a guard or ensure your guard doesn't miss and know his jump shot because you can't afford to give these type of builds the ball every second. Another piece of advice is to try and pull the chair on the post score. Now I noticed for me that it's harder to pull the chair on a center. It doesn't really work. Um, when a guard is guarding them, it is easier to pull the chair. So that's uh, that piece of advice is more for when you're on the 1v1 court. Um, I would definitely double team sometimes if you have to. There's a strategic way to play the double team. You don't fully double team because you'll leave one man open to score, but you kind of fake the double team, which can definitely intimidate the post scorer into taking a bad shot. So you kind of have what what I'll do is um, I'll play I'll play paint, and the the uh, guard will play on the post scorer. So for example, if it's a post scorer and a paint beast like so in the clip. Um, I'll play paint meaning I'll be able to get the boards and if he comes to the paint I will um, Be able to get a block and the guard will actually guard the post hook instead of the center because it's easier for a guard to um, I know there's a height difference, but the guard will be able to pull the chair or get a steal on him So definitely trying to make the center play back and the guard play on the ball defense when playing against the post score That is probably one of the more vital um, probably harder to understand defensive um, ways that I play against post scores um, overall it's just a really big challenge to be able to beat these kind of lineups I have managed to go and beat a few of them a lot of them I've lost to because it's just really cheesy especially when they're in takeover and that is why my next tip is for you not to let them get into takeover so every time you reach, every time you commit a foul against them, it only boosts them. They will become better, their takeover bar will go up, their grade becomes better. It's not a good idea to spam the reach. Some people think that it's a good idea to actually do that, and it's really not. It's not a good idea to try and reach against a post score. They do have, they usually have a good ball handle, and usually good ones have unpluckable on at least gold, so it'll be so much harder for you to reach. Do not let them get in takeover. When they are in takeover, they love contact. So when you get them that l2 animation and you bump them when they're in takeover it only betters them avoid giving them contact try and play no l2 defense on them and jump perfectly and my biggest piece of advice is definitely not let them get into any form of takeover now that is all for today's video guys i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did like the video do leave a like if you like my content like what i'm doing support my channel support what i'm doing subscribe and definitely please do hit the notification bell but join notification gang get notified notifications every and any single time that I post on this channel once again I do appreciate you guys viewing we are on the road to a thousand subscribers before my birthday December 18th it looks like we'll hit that mark a lot sooner um, and once we hit 1k we'll definitely be on the road to 2,000 subs I will be getting next gen as soon as possible um, it does release next Tuesday um, it does look very exciting a new chapter for this channel is next gen once again guys thank you so much for all the support uh, please do like comment subscribe and I'm out.